What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through the process of designing, planning, and building your own box for the back of your fifth gen 4Runner or any SUV or truck on the market. So I looked at a lot of different designs online, different things that other people had done, and I decided to design and build my own box for my fifth gen 4Runner. I really like this kind of um, truck bed finish on it. I use Raptor liner. I like this uh, aluminum L channel, just really cleans things up. These handles are beautiful. And I put some nice ball bearing drawer slides in there. What I also did when I built this was I made it so that I could have a functional table here. So if I wanted to cook food or prepare stuff, I could do that. But then I also have storage underneath for all my stuff. So it's kind of nice that way. Um, then if you pull it out even further, you have some more storage here. The same drawer on the other side here has just a divider to kind of keep things organized. What I found when I went camping in my, my fifth gen foreigner here is that I'd have stuff everywhere. It was hard to stay organized. It was hard to have a nice dry surface to kind of prepare stuff on. So I really wanted to create a box like this just to keep things organized. It isn't really a cheap project to do. It does take time but it will save you money. If you buy something like this online, they're extremely heavy, so shipping costs a lot of money, and they're like $1,500. You can build this for a fraction of the price. It, it still isn't cheap. Um, the most expensive part here is the drawer slides. I'll leave links to all this stuff in the description, but the drawer slides are probably the most expensive part. Um, then you'll use a bunch of wood. I used bed liner on it. I love the finish that it gave it. That does cost a bit more money too. But yeah, let's jump into the project. I'll show you how I built this. I'll take you through every single step that you need to know to build this for your fifth gen foreigner, SUV or truck. We're gonna start with measuring and then we're gonna start cutting the pieces. Let's jump into the process. All right, so for the project, what you'll require is two pieces of plywood. I got four by eight sheets. Uh, one is a half inch thick, one is three quarters of an inch thick. We got some hardware, three quarter inch wood screws, a half inch wood screws, one and a half inch wood screws, two handles, some wood glue, and Raptor liner to coat things at the end and make it look pretty. We have our bull bearing slides. These are locking bull bearing slides, really good reviews. These support 150 pounds each and will be sufficient for this project. All this stuff, except for the plywood, I got off of Amazon, really good reviews. I'll leave links in the description to where you can find all of this. All right, so coming into the back of our vehicle, we wanna know how wide we can make our box and how long our box can be. Uh, our seats are on an angle, so we have to take that into consideration. So I'll, I'll just measure the bottom here, 39 here, but I do want to give myself a little bit of wiggle room and these seats are on an angle, so I'll give myself about four inches there, so. All right, so I also want to determine how high my drawer system is gonna come up. I think to about here would be good. I have a bigger cooler I want to put up on top here. Measure how high that is. So about 13 inches in total. All right, so we have 35 inches of uh, length there. We're gonna go 41 inches wide. So length times width. And the height of our total project will be 13 inches. That's how high our box is gonna be. So we want our top to come out a little bit over our bottom. So our bottom piece needs to be kind of recessed in a bit, just so our drawers fit flush. So our top piece will be 35 into the vehicle, 41 with width and our bottom piece of our box will be 34 and a quarter times 41, and that's just so that our drawers will be recessed, so the top will kind of overhang and our drawers will go in and fit flush. So those are our dimensions, let's make those cuts now. All right, so we're gonna cut a 41 inch piece off of here. This is the width, and then we'll eventually cut the, the depth here. So let's measure out from the side. So I measured five inches from the line I wanted to cut, and then I created another line and then clamped down my level. I used my level with some clamps as a guide with my circular saw to make it perfectly straight cut. All right, so this is our top piece. It's 41 inches wide now. We've cut that part to, to length. Now we gotta do how deep it's gonna go into our vehicle. So that was 35. Great, so now we have our top. It's 41 inches wide and it is 35 inches deep. Now we'll cut our bottom using the same method and then we'll have our top and bottom made for our box. All right, so we want a total height on our box of 13 inches. Bottom of our box is a half an inch and the top is three quarters of an inch. 1.25 inches, just in material, because we're creating, what we want to create is the back 
and the sides and the center piece. So if our box is here, we want to create the back piece, the piece in the center and the two pieces on the side. So we got to figure out, this is where our drawers are going to go in. So we got to figure out how tall we want to make these pieces and how far in they need to go. So for height, we got 13, we're going to minus 1.25. That's for the top and bottom because it's going to be, these pieces are going to be sandwiched with the top and bottom for a total height of 13 inches. So that would be uh, 11 and three quarters of an inch in height for these pieces, the back and the center divider and the sides. Um, and then going into our box, this back piece is three quarters of an inch thick. So we need to figure out the length of these pieces here. And I think that would be 33 and a half because our bottom piece was 34 and a quarter. And then we subtract three quarters of an inch. And that, yeah, that gives us 33 and a half. So that's the distance going in on these pieces. Our back piece will be a height of 11 and three quarters. And it will be um, a width here of 41 because we know that 41 is the width across. So for these three pieces, we have say a length of 33 and a half and a height of 11 and three quarters. So let's make these cuts. So we need three of these pieces and then we'll make the backing. Once I had all my pieces cut, I then test fit them by placing them on the base. I marked middle for my center divider for the two drawers, measured, made sure everything was just perfectly straight. I then used an angle just to make sure everything was square. I put some glue down and then held the pieces in place using the glue. And then I was almost ready to fasten it down with screws. So starting with the back, I drilled my pilot holes. I did three for each piece coming from the back. Drilled those pilot holes in and then eventually put in my one and a half inch wood screws. So at this point I wanted to figure out the dimensions of my drawer. I had to figure out the width but also the height of the drawers and then factor in the fact that the slides take up a certain amount of room on each side. Now the slides on each side would take up three quarters of an inch for an inch and a half total. So. Once I measured my width, I needed to subtract an inch and a half for it to be the right size. And then I also need to wiggle room up and down. You can't have it completely the exact same size as uh, or the height of the opening. Otherwise, it'll rub on the top and bottom as it goes in and out. So you want to subtract about an inch, maybe an inch and a half to give yourself a little bit of room on the bottom and a little bit of room on the top. Once the wood glue had dried enough, I was able to flip the project onto its side to drill my pilot holes and put in my one and a half inch wood screws. This secured my bottom to my sides, centerpiece, and backing. All right, so for the slides, what we'll do is we'll put it flush against the back here, slide it back, and you want to line up this part here. You want this to be flush. And then what we'll do is we'll open this up all the way. And that's going to reveal a bunch of drill spots, holes for your screws. What we'll do is we'll go in there, we'll create pilot holes, beep, 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 beep. And then we'll put our three quarter inch screws in. It's these guys here after we create our pilot holes. So let's do that now. And you can do these by hand because these are small screws, so it's, it'd be easy to strip this wood out. I have my drill on a pretty sensitive setting here, so it won't apply too much torque to the screws. Great. And last one here. Great. And you can come in with a screwdriver and just make sure those are torqued on there well enough. But that's nice and firm. Slides in nicely. Perfect. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our drawers. Um, we have our drawer sides and we have our back here. So what we'll do is put some pilot holes in. I'm just resting it on the drawer bottom. We'll eventually screw it into there, but what we'll do first is just attach the back to the sides. Okay. 
All right, so we put the backing on. Now we flip the drawer upside down. We're gonna put the bottom. We're gonna screw it into our sides here. So what we'll do is put some pilot holes in. All right, now we're gonna put the drawer front on. So that's gonna go between the sides. Now this is, I consider this the front of the drawer, but we're also gonna put a, a, a plate basically across here, a face, and that's what's gonna have our handle in. But yeah, this is the, the front here, so let's, let's do our pilot holes and get this screwed in. All right, so we have our bowl bearing slide here mounted to the exterior box. Now we wanna connect it to our actual drawer. Um, this is easy to line up because this just ends up flush with the exterior of the box, but the inside slide, you have to actually mark its position. Then what we'll do is slide it out, line it up, and then we'll put our first drill hole in and that will kind of make things lined up so that when we close it, it's still flush like this. So let's take our pencil here. There's a little bit of a line in here. We'll just run it along there. Great. And I'll do that on the other side. Same thing. Great. So I'll pull the slide out. So I marked it along this edge here. So I put a line here, a little mark, and that's gonna line up with this edge here. And then there's a couple holes here for me to drill in. So I'll put my first drill hole in. But what we wanna do is we want our drawer to be a little bit off the base. We don't want it sitting flat on the base. So we'll just shim it up a bit. I'm gonna use some cardboard before I put my hole in. And then I'll drill my pilot hole and I'll put my screw in. The drawer shimmed up off the bot base so it should look good and it should slide nicely in and out. Great, and then we'll repeat that process for the opposite side. And then basically what we'll do is repeat that process. Now we'll slide it out even further to the next drill holes here. There's another set. There's another set of holes. You can barely see them there, but we'll shim again, two pilot holes, drill two more screws in, move it out, repeat the process until the whole drawer here is secured onto this ball bearing set. All right, so we got all four slides in. Everything's nice and flush here. Everything looks really good. Um, with these slides on the sides, I actually had to add a little shim in a couple little spots, just little one eighth um, particle board shims just to move it into the right spot. I just, this gap was a bit too large. So that's how I fixed that problem. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is <clears throat> you wanna make these drawers smaller than your actual box. So just mine were pretty close. Um, I left a decent gap on the bottom here just so they wouldn't catch on the bottom, but I don't want it catching on the top lid once we screw that down. So a good way to make sure that it's gonna work Take a level or something flat like this and just run it along and make sure you have a little gap in here. Otherwise your drawers will slide along the top of your box and you don't want that because it'll catch. If you do see a high spot, if it touches here, take a sander with like 60 grit sandpaper and just, just bring down that edge. And you know, I have about a quarter, one eighth of an inch gap all the way along here and that's probably what you'd wanna do. So just a little tip there. All right, so I'm now ready to create the, the front piece here that's gonna go over top of this, and I'm gonna cut holes to notch out for the, um, the locks. Um, this piece that's gonna go on here will have the handle on it, and we're gonna basically cut into this piece to allow this um, recessed piece to kind of come into it, but also this piece will hide that cut. So we need to create two, one for this drawer and one for that drawer because they're gonna move on their own, right? So. Best way to do this is just measure across. So confirm that, looks good. We're pretty square, it's 41 on the top as well. And then we'll want the height. So exactly about one foot. So we'll do 41 by 12 inches up, a little under 12 inches. And then we'll just do a, a once we get that dimension cut, one flat piece, We'll just do a cut directly in the middle and that will be our two drawer front covers that will have our handles in them. So let's do that now. All right, so I've ripped the fronts of the drawers to 12 inches tall by 20 and a half for a total of 41 across. 
Um, what I did is I placed this on here, basically measured up four inches and found center. And then I traced around it, measuring and using the level. And then this flange that goes around here is a half an inch. So I measured a half an inch in, and this is the area here that we need to cut out. So let's cut this area out with our jigsaw. All right, so we're now ready to put the, the lid on top of our box here. You may notice these shims on the front of the drawers here. This is just uh, one eighth of an inch material and I've just kind of screwed it in place and I'm gluing it on. And it's just to make sure that once I put those drawer fronts on that they're not going to hit here and prevent these locks from going in and prevent it from properly closing and locking in. So I just need those um, front covers just a little bit further out. But um, yeah, let's get the lid on here. I then removed all of the screws holding the shims in place once the glue was dried. I then applied some poly to the front and secured it in place with some tape just to prevent any of the Raptor liner from getting into the drawer slides and causing them to jam up, that sort of thing. I did apply the Raptor liner using a spray gun, a pneumatic spray gun, but you can use an aerosol can. I'll leave links in the description to where you can find Raptor liner in just aerosol spray cans. All right, so we've sprayed the Raptor liner on. It has cured, I got two layers on here. Um, what we'll do now is just take off this, this cover that I put on the front here. Let's pull this off. And then I also, what I did is I put my metal trim that I'm gonna use later, I placed it on here, I drew a line, and I, I used that exact amount of tape to, um, to cover up the spot, just so this fits flush onto the, the actual wood and it's not sitting on the Raptor liner. So. Perfect, and now what we'll do is we'll put our trim on here and we'll line up the end and we'll take our pencil and we'll just mark exactly where the box ends. All right, so we got our piece of aluminum L channel here cut to length. I've gone in and I just sanded it in a way that it kind of gives it like a brushed aluminum look. Um, I also kind of roughed up the surface on the inside here. Now I have some cement, um, an adhesive, an automotive adhesive. What I'm gonna do now is just apply it to the metal on the inside here. Great, that looks good. We'll just let that kind of dry up a bit and then we'll put a few screws into the top. All right, so what we wanna do is put our face on here and we just wanna make sure that it fits properly. Good, we have space on the bottom, space on the top. It's square, lined up nice on here. Now, we don't wanna run screws through the front here because that'd be ugly, there'd be exposed screws showing. Um, we'll obviously have some on this plate, but that will look kinda of neat. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll secure this in place. We'll drill a couple pilot holes in here, put a couple screws through just to hold this in place and we'll pull the drawer out and we'll actually come from the back. We won't go all the way through because we don't want screws sticking out, but we'll have the right length that will just come through and secure this onto the drawer. And then we'll do a couple longer ones through here just to secure it in the center. All right, so we're now ready to put the handles in, so we'll just place them on top here. I've removed those two guide screws now that we got our screws coming from the back, so we'll just place this on here, make sure that it's square, perfectly centered, and we'll just hold it in place here. And so what I'll do is I'll use two of my longer screws here to just get this in on each side. And then I'm gonna use those half inch screws all around just because they have a nicer, more rounded face on them, which will just look better. So let's put those in then.
Awesome, it looks good. And I'm just repeat that process for the other side and we're done. So at this point, what I did is I took some measurements of my drawer. Um, this is kind of optional, but I wanted to put a divider within the drawer. And I also wanted to create a surface on which I could cook and cut vegetables, prepare food, that sort of thing. So I took my measurements of the drawer, made a cut for the divider, ensured that it fit properly within the drawer system and wasn't hitting on the top when I closed it. I then drilled the pilot holes and then I ran through one and a half inch to two inch screws. I ran actually ran two inch screws, three on each side, which I think is to hold it in place quite well. I then made my measurements to put the supports in for my table. Um, what I used was half inch by three quarter inch spruce trim. Um, I then held it in place. I measured down three quarters of an inch because the wood that I was gonna put in on the top was three quarters of an inch thick. Like you could use plywood or you could use solid wood. I then ran through some some screws. I think I used one inch screws. I did a little test fit to make sure it fit perfectly. I then drilled a hole in the center. This was so that I could remove that top piece easily. Um, so basically you have a flat surface on the top, but you can also store stuff underneath. I then test fit it and it seemed to fit perfect. I was really happy with the result and this was the completion of the job. You could repeat this process for the other side. Um, I did put a divider in my other drawer as well. All right guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you were able to design yourself a nice drawer system for your fifth gen 4Runner and the SUV or truck. Um, I really enjoyed the process. I hope you guys found the video useful. If you did, please like, subscribe. I hope to come up with a lot more videos and always appreciate your guys' support. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye now.